Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to hit a perfect serve. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. All right, the most important shot, you've got to be able to hold serve if you wanna win a lot of matches, and being able to get free points with your serve is critical to that. So let's talk about the grip and how you're gonna hold the racket. There are two spots on your hand you're gonna to wanna to know about. The base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad. And you're gonna put those two spots on a very specific bevel or side on your racket. First, make sure that your racket is on edge to get the orientation correct. We are looking at an octagon with the top side being bevel number one. If you're right-handed, you count to the right. If you're left-handed, you count to the left. I'm right-handed, I'm gonna to count to the right, so this is bevel one. Bevel two, which is this top right slanted bevel, that's the serve grip. Bevel three, bevel four, bevel five. Incidentally, bevels one and five are the same for righties and lefties. Bevel one is on top, bevel two is on, I'm sorry, bevel five is on bottom for the lefty. This is bevel two, that's the lefty's serve grip. Bevel three, bevel four, and bevel five. So what I wanna do for hitting my best serves or learning to hit my best serves is I'm gonna take these two spots and I'm gonna put them on bevel number two. This is the slanted top right for right-handers, slanted top right 45 degree angle bevel. So I take the heel pad first, I place it on bevel number two, and then I put the base knuckle on bevel number two as well. You'll notice when you hold the racket correctly that there's space in between the index and middle finger. That's called a trigger finger. The trigger finger itself is, doesn't have a lot of importance, but it's an indicator that your knuckle and heel pad are on correctly. You'll notice if I take my heel pad off and you can see that spot, I know you can, you can see that spot right there. Notice I got rid of my uh, base knuckle. So having the, the, the heel pad and the knuckle on correctly instantly gives me the trigger finger. So let's talk about the seven serve checkpoints. There are seven places in your serve that you wanna know about. And I, I would highly recommend, even if you push pause right now and just get a pen, a pen and paper to write down some notes, but I want you to know what to look for in certain moments and times in your serve. So let me go over the seven checkpoints first and then we'll go over each checkpoint. So checkpoint number one is the ready position. Checkpoint two is called palm down. Checkpoint three is knock off the birthday hat. Checkpoint four is called on edge. Checkpoint five is the contact. Six is pronated and seven is the finish. So it's one, checkpoint one, ready position, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You, you want to know about each checkpoint and you want to know what to look for in each checkpoint. That's what we're gonna go over right now. So checkpoint number one, the ready position. I've got my grip. Once I get my grip, I want to get my stance. I don't want you to have your back foot way over to one side or the other. I know Federer serves like this. I would recommend that you don't copy that. What I want you to copy is that your feet are very much in line, almost like you're on a skateboard and you're skateboarding toward the net. It makes it actually easier to then coil when your feet are more next to each other rather than one foot, especially behind. There's a false sense of coiling when your back foot is way behind you like Fetter, and then it actually is harder to coil the body because you turn so far away from the net. So try to get your feet more in line with each other and it'll make it easier to actually produce easy speed and power. Your front foot's gonna be angled in, back foot is pretty much parallel to the baseline. And again, you can make little tweaks to this. Personally on my serve, my back foot isn't directly in line with my front, my back foot is slightly behind. To me, that's what feels best and I feel like I hit my best serve. Again, I don't want you all the way back here. When holding the ball, hold it like a glass of water. A couple days ago, it might've been yesterday, I forget what day it was, um, but I made a video on ways to improve your toss. 
And I suggested that rather than holding the ball with your palm up, which just leads to bending the elbow and flicking the wrist and rolling the ball off the fingertips, actually hold the ball like a glass of water. Notice how that changed my elbow position. Now I can't bend my elbow to toss the ball. I'm not gonna flick my wrist. All I'm gonna do is just go up and release the ball. Look at Ivo Karlovich toss the ball. You'll see exactly how it looks like he's tossing a glass of water into the air. It makes for a much more reliable toss. So when you get your feet and you put your ball out to then place the racket on, hold the ball like you're holding a glass of water. Because we have the continental grip, I would recommend that you start with your racket slightly open. See, when players are struggling using the continental grip or they use a forehand grip, their strings point down. In fact, I would highly recommend that you don't bounce the ball with your racket. When you bounce the ball with your racket, it basically forces you to use a grip to bounce it that you actually don't want to use on the serve. So only use your hand. And if you're a coach, you know what I mean. And if you're a coach, please recommend to your students that they only bounce the ball with their hand because the correct grip on the serve, it's actually very difficult to bounce the ball. It, it's very difficult to bounce the ball with the racket if you have the correct grip. So don't let them bounce the ball with their racket if you're a coach, only bounce the ball with the hand and actually start with the racket slightly open. Again, these are all things to promote, not just starting with the correct grip, but keeping it. A big mistake I see recreational players make is they have every intention of using the continental grip and they've got it and then they start bouncing the ball even if they bounce the ball only with their hand and then they're so used to their strings facing down with the forehand grip now they've got a continental and their brain starts going oh we got to get our strings to point down because that's what I'm used to and then without them even knowing and unbeknownst to them their strings change their grip changes and they're back to their forehand grip. So only bounce the ball with your hand, hold the ball like a glass of water, rest the racket on the ball and have your racket and your arms nice and loose and have your racket slightly open. This is the beginning of a great serve. One thing I will add as well is take a nice deep breath and just relax. Get all the tension out of your body. The looser you are, the faster you'll be able to swing. So that's what checkpoint number one is. And, and I would tell you that most players who you watch at a tennis club, when they sit up to serve, you gotta, you gotta begin with the end in mind. Most players don't do themselves any favors by how they set up to hit a tennis ball and hit the serve. Because then once you get derailed, it's very hard to get back on track. All right, I'm bouncing the ball only with my hand. Front foot is angled. My feet are pretty much lined up with my target. Racket resting on the ball that I'm holding like a glass of water and my strings are slightly open. So that's checkpoint number one. Checkpoint number two is called palm down. Now, the way you get to checkpoint number two in an efficient way that's gonna help you hit racket speed is to coil. So I don't want you to think of down together, up together, right? So it's the classic down together, up together that you see players try all the time and it's really not gonna help you hit your best serves. What is gonna help you hit your best serves is to coil to prepare and start the serve. So notice how you cannot see my chest right now, but now you can. So I'm gonna turn and a coil occurs. A coil meaning my upper body is gonna turn more than my lower body. Again, this is important. It's important why we had our toes more in line with each other rather than the foot way back. If my feet are pretty much in line with my target, and it doesn't matter if I'm serving on the do side or add side, when the feet are lined up with my target, it makes it very easy to coil. Again, will you see pros always copy that? No, there are a lot of people who do a lot of things that we don't want to copy. I'm trying to give you the best chance to hit your best serve. So I want you to just practice turning. And you could do this you know, in your house right now. Grab your racket and, and join along with me. I want you to notice why I wanted the racket resting on the ball at the beginning of the serve. Because when I rotate my body, my left side and my right side are turning as a unit, which allows a coil to occur, my upper body turning more than my lower body. And then once I make that move, I'm going to begin the toss slightly first because we need the tossing arm to lead so that the racket is a little bit late, setting up the necessity for racket speed. And when I make that move and I toss, my strings are pointing down. This is vital. I, I'm a big fan, and you're gonna see it in a little bit here. I'm a big fan of knocking off a birthday hat on the serve, and I'll show you that in a second. But you're not gonna be able to knock off a birthday hat if you immediately get into this position, 
where the tip of the racket is pointing at the back fence, whether strings facing up, strings facing uh, on edge, or strings facing down. I don't want you pointing the tip of the racket at the back fence. I want you, when you coil and you begin to toss, to have the tip of the racket facing the same direction as your chest. Players who go palm up in the waitress position, the waiter's tray, they go like this. And as they begin to toss, they point the tip of the racket the direction their back is facing. What you want to learn is after you coil and you begin the toss and the tossing arm leads, to have the strings facing down, tip of the racket facing off to the right if I'm right-handed. Again, reverse everything if you're a lefty. My strings are facing down at this point and I can place a ball in the throat of the racket. This position right here is the position to throw from. That is a throwing position. My elbow is back, my palm is down. That's what you see a, a football quarterback, a baseball pitcher, they'll get into that position. Hand and elbow and shoulder very level with each other. This is the position you don't want to be in when you throw. You don't want to throw from this position. But that's the position players get into on their serve when they go palm up, they get into the waiter's tray. So what you can practice is racket resting on the ball, coil and toss and just get into this position and look at your racket. Notice I'm not looking up, I'm not looking at my opponent. I'm looking, this is what you're gonna do when you practice, I'm looking at my racket and I can take a ball and place it in the throat of the racket. Elbow is back, this is what Jeff Salzenstein calls elbow the enemy and you're not like elbowing someone hard, it's almost like a gentle tap with your elbow back. This is gonna set up the ability to use your fastest service motion. So that drill or that kind of shadow swing right there is something you wanna practice. Coil, toss, and if you don't have a ball, if you're in your house right now, just pretend to toss. Coil, toss, and then stop. And look to see if your racket is around chest level, strings down, tip of the racket facing, to the right, elbow facing to the left from your camera's view, and a ball can sit in the throat of the racket. I want you to look at Federer, hit a serve. Look at Osaka, um, look at Kyrgios, look at Monfils. When their racket is around chest level, their strings are facing down, you could place a ball in the throat of the racket. I love using Federer's serve as a model for players to copy. His service motion is so easy for people to copy, truly if they know what to look for and what to copy. So, checkpoint number two. Ball should already be out of the hand because you've already tossed. Remember, the tossing arm leads. That creates the environment that, you know, for racket speed. Strings are facing down. Now, this leads us, and I gotta get my birthday hat for this. This leads us to checkpoint number three, which is called knock off the birthday hat. About six years ago, I was teaching a bunch of eight and nine year olds uh, how to, you know, how to serve. And they were doing the classic strings facing up. And I said to them, look, unicorns cannot serve correctly. And they all laughed and I said, no, it's true because their racket would hit the horn. And I showed them a video of Roger Federer and I thought, what can I put on their head that would be the unicorn horn that they could actually hit and, and to see if, you know, if their racket moved correctly. And I thought about the birthday hat. And I went out, got birthday hats, brought them to the next class. I still remember <laughs> what class it was. It was a Thursday, four o'clock class. And uh, the next week I brought it, uh, brought the pack of birthday hats to the class and it completely changed their serves. The parents were amazed, it was a very cool thing. And ever since then, I think I've kind of been known as the birthday hat guy for serves. But most drills we coaches teach our students, it's on the serve, it's do the drill and then come hit serves and hope the drill made an improvement on the serve. But the birthday hat gives you instant feedback as to whether or not you're doing the waitress or you're actually moving the racket correctly the way Federer does. So what you wanna learn is from checkpoint two, and by the way, if you go into checkpoint two and you've got your strings facing up, you'll never hit the birthday hat. St strings facing down, from this point, you need to move the racket in over the head as the legs are then bending. So you toss, and once the ball comes out of your hand and you're in checkpoint number two, the knees begin to bend as the racket goes to the birthday hat. See, let me just hit a serve right now. You'll see that I knock the birthday hat off with my racket 
and look how the racket, the racket knocked the birthday hat off, right? That was my first serve I hit this morning, by the way. <laughs> that was a pretty good serve. Felt good. My racket knocked the birthday hat off. That move. S some players, because I do it, you know, I, I do a full serve, they're not sure what's happening. They think when I say knock the birthday hat off that I mean on the way up to the ball. It's not. It's while I'm going back. So if you're looking for a better way to move your racket and to practice your serve, just get a birthday hat. By the way, I get messages of people all the time saying, hey, I got my pack of birthday hats. I'm going to go out and serve right now. So, and these are people all around the world. It's cool to see a birthday hat trick kind of being used around the world to, to improve service motions. So the ball comes out of my hand. My knees are bending. My strings are facing down, by the way. So I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I know Federer gets to the birthday hat like this, but I'm going to try my best to feel like my strings are facing down. Again, that just keeps us from going palm up, which isn't the, the motion you wanna use. My strings are facing down as the racket comes up to my birthday hat, and I get to the birthday hat, and when I get to the birthday hat, that's when my knees are fully engaged. My knee bend is complete at that point, and we'll talk about why in a second here, but just practice those ideas. Bounce the ball with only your hand, front foot angled, back foot parallel. Your feet are basically on a skateboard. You're gonna rest the racket on the ball that you're holding like a glass of water. Strings facing slightly up just to practice and make sure you've got the continental grip. Coil to build up and, and store energy. Coil, and, and by the way, I didn't mention, as I'm doing this, my weight is rocking back. So you're not just coiling, but your weight is going back because you want the weight to go forward. I didn't mention that. So you're gonna coil, you're gonna to toss first slightly. I don't want you scissoring your arms. So I want the arms coming up at a similar time like Fetter, but you want to lead with the tossing hand. You'll notice my tossing hand is like I'm tossing a glass of water, my palm is not up. That helps me to not use my elbow or wrist to toss. My strings are down at this point, palm is down. And then I bring the racket in over my head to knock off a birthday hat and the knee bend occurs between the release of the ball and the knocking off of the birthday hat. So just fixing those parts, those three checkpoints, getting those three checkpoints is going to make an enormous difference in hitting your best serve. All right. Now let's talk about the toss because it, it, you'll even notice maybe if you go back and watch the serve I just hit, the toss should not be straight above your head or even slightly to your left. You want that toss off to your right, if you're right-handed. And this is gonna be whether you're on the do side or the add side. Let me hit a couple serves. I have a pretty low toss. So I want my students to have a toss that is uh, a foot and a half higher than their reach or less. I would say that's kind of an acceptable range. Um, I basically hit the ball near the peak. I would say my, the ball drops a, an inch or two or three. Um, but let me just hit some serves and I want you to watch where my toss is because my toss is gonna be forward into the court and it's gonna be to the right of me. And I'll talk, to, talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> I totally forgot I had the birthday hat on. Look at that, I knocked the birthday hat off. That's so funny. So I'm gonna go through it. Um, uh, when you swing correctly, and we'll talk about this in a second, it actually whips the racket off to the right, which just means I'm putting the ball in the way of my fastest racket. But just watch my toss. Watch where I place the toss. You'll notice I fall into the court. Like, I don't want you serving and just staying behind the baseline. I want you to go into the court on your serve. So if I don't hit that ball, you can see how pretty, pretty low that toss is. If I don't hit this ball, watch where the ball goes. See how it's going into the court? It's like inside the court. So most players, they toss, and the toss goes up, and then down, like it doesn't go anywhere. You want the toss to be a rainbow. You want the toss to go into the court. Watch the pros, when they're done on their serve, they land inside the baseline. Well, it's, it's only gonna happen if you're, if you're tossing in front of the baseline. 
not only does the toss be a, should the toss be a little low so that you can swing fast, and I'm not saying down here, I'm just saying not super, super high, because that gives you less time, which actually forces you to swing fast, which is a good thing. But we want the toss to be in so we're leaning, right? So you see players, they're working on their serve and they're working on a really fast serve, but their toss goes straight up. So then when they lean and they really go for their serve, then the toss becomes behind them because they've tossed up, but now they're leaning forward and the ball continually goes out. So practice tossing into the court. You'll get more racket speed and the ball's gonna go in, which obviously is what we want. Okay, so we're at this point, checkpoint number three. The racket is passing in over the head to hit to the birthday hat. At this point, three things are going to occur. The legs are gonna go up as the racket is hitting my birthday hat, as the tossing hand is dropping. Let me show you this from the side. This was a, a correlation I came across a couple years back. Uh, I wish I would have noticed it earlier. <laughs> Let me say that. The correlation is that three things happen simultaneously. And there's leeway to this from pro to pro, but if you kind of took all pros and you put them together, this is what you would see that the, when the legs come up and begin pushing, that's the exact moment that the racket hits the birthday hat. And it's also when the tossing arm begins to drop. Now, a few exceptions. If you look at Riley Opelka, he begins the upward motion with his legs before his racket gets to the birthday hat. You look at Grigor Dimitrov, same thing his legs start pushing up before the racket gets to the birthday hat. If you look at uh, Ash Barty, you look at Roger Federer, they begin the leg drive as they're hitting the birthday hat. What you don't want to happen, and this is what I see most juniors especially, if, you, if I go on like social media, you go on Instagram and, and TikTok, you see players serving, and juniors especially, and they tend to time their leg drive with the racket going up. So the racket's already dropped, then their legs start pushing up. It's way too late. What we want is the legs to go up as the racket is knocking off the birthday hat because what happens is as the racket is dropping and going behind you, it helps stretch the shoulder and it becomes like a whip. So your body is pushing up as the racket gets pulled down and then that slingshot effect and that catapult effect gives you more racket speed. So look at your serve very carefully and make sure that as your racket is knocking, wear a birthday hat, by the way, that way you like, this, th there's a reason why I don't just tell you to imagine, but I show you wearing a birthday hat because I want you to actually wear a birthday hat. If you're a tennis camp, if you have an academy, if you run a tennis club, if you, if you are a coach at a high school or middle school, college, have everyone wear birthday hats. And, instantly you'll have the, your, your group and your academy and your team will have the best serves around. It's just how it works. So look to see when you film your students or when you film yourself that your body is going up as you are knocking off the birthday hat. And that's the exact moment that the arms then begin dropping. The body movement is opposite of the arms. So as the arms are coming up, the body is going down. You can see that. And then as the arms begin going down, then the body goes up. It's, they take turns moving one in the other direction. That's just how it works. So the body is going up. I'm coiling, sorry, I'm uncoiling at this point because I've coiled at the beginning. Now I'm like a corkscrew. Not only am I pushing up with my body, but because I coiled, now I'm turning as I come up huge amount of racket speed that comes from this. And because of my continental grip, when I come around, I come around on edge. On edge means I could take a coin and place it on the edge of my racket. I'll get rid of that for the moment. <laughs> it's annoying me you know, trying to do this video with that birthday hat on. So what I want is for you to look at your serve and see if your racket is on its edge at this point. If you look at, um, Let's take Federer. Let's take John Isner, for instance. When Isner comes around to hit his serve, and check it out, like look in slow motion at an Isner serve. His strings are facing down 
at this point. As he's about to go up to the ball, the strings are facing down. Now, they become on edge prior to contact, but this is the whole point of keeping the ball in the throat of the racket to practice this. As the racket comes around, the racket is on edge. See, what we want to use with our continental grip is we want to use a continental grip in a way that forces us to have to pronate and turn the forearm in order to hit the serve. What typically happens is players serve, even with the best intentions to knock off the birthday hat. They'll get to here and then they'll almost sometimes even change their grip and their strings will face up to the ceiling, up to the sky. And when your strings face up at this point, then what you don't have to do is pronate. What you need to do is actually just snap your wrist or from the side, you'll, you'll notice this if you're a coach, you'll see players, they'll pull down to hit their serve, almost trying to keep this angle intact, which is not what you want. You wanna be on edge with a continental grip, which promotes the snapping of the forearm. So it's not a wrist snap, it's a snapping of the forearm. You can see my, my wrist is actually perfectly flat at this point. So it's, it, we're trying not to make this move, we're trying to make this move. We can only do that if our racket is on edge. So film your serve and see if after you knock off the birthday hat, if your racket is on its edge. This is checkpoint number four on the serve. So racket is on edge at this point, that will lead the front edge of the racket to the ball and then we can even spin the ball, we can hit top spin, we can hit slice to spin it out wide, we can even pronate to be able to hit a really flat serve and fast serve. You're going to pronate on every serve, it just depends on the racket direction and how early you pronate that's going to give you the amount of spin or flat serve you're, you can hit. At that same moment, remember we talked about three things happening, I'll show you this from the side. At that exact moment when your racket is coming around and the, and the tossing arm is dropping. We want to drop the tossing arm as the racket's about to get on, to, on its edge. But as the tossing arm is dropping, we then want to, because it's going to drop out toward the net, we want to bring the tossing arm in against our body. So the tossing arm drops, it drops, and then we start the process of bringing it in against the body. It's vital that we are not rotating as we serve, but rather we want to rotate and then stop the rotation. The energy gets transferred into the arm and the racket and the racket accelerates. Let's go right to the contact because I'm going to explain this. We see that a lot of players, a lot of juniors around the world, I see them on Instagram and they are copying this left arm position. So you'll see them serve and they go, and their left arm's back here. And what they're missing is actually what's most important on the serve. And that is that we bring this tossing arm in against our body as a reactive break. What we don't want is the body rotating as we serve. We want the body to unwind, un so we're coiled and now we're uncoiling and then we stop the body and that accelerates the racket incredibly. When you bring this tossing arm in against the body and you film yourself from the back, you'll see it right here. Look at Federer hit a serve from the back view and stop the video at contact. You'll see his left hand right here. His left hand is not here. Look at Dominic Team. look at Andy Roddick, look at Andy Murray. These are all players who are known for doing this. But their tossing arm is up against their body as they're hitting. And that is a reactive break. When you slow the body's rotation, the racket accelerates. When you make that move and the racket is on its edge, what starts to happen is this. Where the racket is behind my hand, now the racket turns to get to contact and now the racket keeps turning and now is this is checkpoint number six which is called pronated where the strings are facing way off to the right now i know pronation begins here pronation begins here but i'm going to call this position pronated where the strings face off to the right let me show you in detail what this looks like during contact so when you are hitting a serve i want you to first practice 
hitting like, a, like you're a basketball player, spinning a ball on your finger. I want you to spin the ball when serving, but after you're done hitting the ball, I want your strings to face off, if you're right-handed, to face off to the right. Now, a lot of players say, why does it matter? I've already hit the ball. Why does it then matter that I'm making this move? It's because you're, making, you're beginning that move prior to hitting. So a body motion just tends to stay in motion. So you're not hitting it as I'm doing it here and then spinning. It's just a little bit of the limitation of the device. But really, you're gonna be turning into the hit. Right? We're making this move. And then we hit and our racket's turning and then it just keeps turning. But you'll notice the ball is spinning to its right. So I could do it with my hand. I can make this move. The reason is because that's the fastest way to move the hand. I'm 42, and when I was a kid, the nurse would give me a mercury thermometer, put it under my tongue. And then, so depending on how old you are, you'll notice. And then the, they, they would go like this. If you hurt your hand, right? If you hurt your hand, you go, ow, and you make this move, right? You don't go like this. If you hurt your hand, you make this move where your palm is in and then your palm is out. So that's the fastest way to move your hand while you're hitting a tennis ball, is rackets on edge, rackets on edge. My palm is facing me, my palm is away from me. I'm still gonna be on edge spinning the ball, but I'm spinning it and then I turn. If I turn early, I can hit flat into the ball. If I lead with the edge a little longer and then turn, then I'm gonna get more spin but you should be pronating on all of your serves. And when you do that, and you come around on edge, as you tuck this tossing arm in against your body, the, the snap that occurs, where your body stops and the arm accelerates, is absolutely amazing. So when you're done, the strings face off if you're right-handed to the right, and then your racket will end up on your left side. If you are someone who jumps, you'll do that in the air, jumping onto your front foot. If you're someone who doesn't jump, that's fine. You'll just do this and your back foot will step forward over your front foot. Let me show you that again. My back foot comes over my front foot. You'll notice as I'm demonstrating this, my body is facing to the right. I'm gonna hit a serve and I'm gonna keep my body facing off to the right. I'll hit a T serve, but my body's gonna face off to the right. Let's see if I can hit the T. It's actually my favorite serve. There we go. So I'm trying to keep my body, I'm trying to keep my body facing off to the right. What I tell my students is when you're done, if you serve correctly with the tossing hand, tucking in against your body, you can actually wave to the camera. So it's called the power X because your arms are crossed like an X. Um, but you're, you're giving yourself a hug basically on the serve. If you wanna make this move, and then when you're done, go like this, I, I'm not there to stop you. But please don't worry about this. Th this has become kind of a status symbol. And, and you see people and they go, ah, and it's like very cool. They're trying to like, it, like literally it's like, I'm cool, look at me serve with my left arm sticking behind me. Um, I, I would highly recommend that you worry about what truly matters. And that is after the tossing arm comes down, it reaches out toward the net and then tucks in against the body. So let's do a quick recap. The grip, the two spots on the hand. And we want to put those two spots, if you're right-handed, on bevel number two, which is here. And if you're lefty, it's bevel two here. Again, that rides all the way up the grip. You just put your, your heel pad and knuckle on the correct bevel, continental grip. You are going to put your feet pretty much in line with your target, front foot angled, back foot uh, parallel basically again these are all recommendations you can tweak it as needed I just don't want you to have your back foot way behind you or your back foot way out in front of you you're gonna bounce the ball only with your hand hold the ball like a glass of water nice and loose rest the racket on the ball and have your string slightly open as just a nice way to make sure that you've got the grip correct that's checkpoint number one ready position checkpoint two you'll coil a little bit letting the weight go back you're gonna lead with the tossing hand and bring the racket up with your strings facing down. 
that will give us the ability to knock off the Bertha hat. The ball, ball is already in the air at this point, and we're tossing forward into the court. If you're right-handed, toss slightly to your right into the court. Lefty, toss into the court on your left side. The racket will pass in over your head, go out and buy a birthday hat and knock the birthday hat off. At this point, your body will begin exploding up and that's when your tossing arm will drop out in front of you and your racket will drop behind you. You'll see my elbow from behind me. My elbow was coming forward. That is the throwing motion, by the way. You see my elbow make this move. My racket is on edge when I do this because of the continental grip. I bring my tossing arm in against my body I start to turn my racket to make contact. My strings keep turning and the strings face off to the right since I'm right-handed and I cross my arms when I am done. Checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, checkpoint four, checkpoint five, checkpoint six, checkpoint seven. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope that you gained something from it that is gonna help you improve your serve. If there was anything in this video that you found beneficial, if there's anything that you <laughs> disagree with, whatever it is, let me know in the comments below. And I think you have seen maybe in my other videos, I do respond to the comments. Um, and, and I don't have somebody doing it for me. I, I do respond personally um, to every single comment. And so just write a question below, Tell me something that you learned that you know is gonna help you with your serve and I'll be sure to respond. So thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Uh, this channel is growing very quickly and I absolutely love it. So thank you so much. If you start learning and, and analyzing and focusing on the checkpoints on your serve, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from twominutetennis.net. You got this.